Well, the crash in South Carolina killed a bride just hours after her wedding and left her groom seriously injured. They were riding in a golf cart when a suspected drunk driver hit them. Nancy Chen has new details about the 25-year-old driver accused of plowing into the newlyweds. It was supposed to be the best day of their lives. A wedding on the South Carolina shore for Samantha Miller and Eric Hutchinson. Followed by a small reception with family and close friends, including Jenna Gribble. This was the happiest like that I'd ever seen her. But as the newlyweds left in a golf cart at the end of the night, an alleged drunk driver slammed into them, traveling nearly three times the speed limit, according to police. All four occupants were thrown from the cart as it rolled several times. The 34-year-old bride was killed. Three others, including Hutchinson, were seriously injured. The groom's mother wrote she was handed his wedding ring at the hospital only five hours after Miller gave it to him. They just looked so happy as they were leaving. They were. That was one of the last things she, she said. She was just like, I don't want tonight to end. And then it was all over. Police say the driver of the car, 25-year-old Jamie Komorowski, smelled of alcohol but refused a field sobriety test. She's been charged with three counts of DUI and one count of reckless homicide. It's a 25-mile-an-hour speed limit island-wide. There's absolutely zero reason a vehicle should be operated that fast. Drunk driving-related deaths have surged in the last few years, from just over 10,000 in 2019 to more than 13,000 in 2021. Gribble is urging people to think twice. In this day and age with Lyft and Uber and cabs, why would you drink and drive? Toxicology results could take another few weeks. Police tell me the golf cart the couple was riding in was legal to drive on the streets. A GoFundMe page has raised more than $500,000. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. All right, so Scott Hamilton is uh, joining us now. He's a reporter at the Charleston Post and Courier, and he's been covering the story uh, for the publication. Listen, thank you so much um, for joining us. Uh, you know, so, some people may be unfamiliar with this area, and they might wonder, you know, what's a, how is a golf cart and a car, how they even sort of in the same place? Can you kind of just describe the area for us, you know, how people use golf carts, just kind of, is this typical? It, it is typical, Anne Marie, and and you come to these communities. It's almost, in some respect, like going back in time. These are small beach towns. They harken back to the 1940s to the 1950s, and, and the streets are very narrow. The streets are covered in the mossy oaks and all the romantic images you can think about when it comes to a beach town in the South. But there's a lot of traffic in these communities, especially somewhere like Folly Beach. You you get somewhere like Folly Beach, and the infrastructure hasn't grown with the with the demand to provide a good time with the man to provide good services mm -hmm. uh golf carts are one way to keep traffic moving people get golf carts they think oh we can get a golf cart we can buzz around go here go there no big deal we don't have to move our car but unfortunately you get a situation like this now the road as was mentioned in that package 25 mile per hour speed limit and this was a low speed vehicle it's not a traditional golf cart the kind you think about out on the uh, at a country club with the golf bags and all that it's a mm -hmm. six person vehicle it was legal to go at night but i believe it has a maximum speed of 15 miles an hour and mm -hmm. you've got a car coming down in 10 o'clock at night going 65 it was just a it was a recipe for disaster. Yeah, indeed. Um, it's really tough to watch the, the video of them getting married because you know, you know, just moments later what happened. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the victims? What have you learned? I, just two kids starting their lives. Yeah. Two kids starting their lives. I, I've, I've spoken to some friends, some people that went to high school with uh, Sam. I've spoken to some people who knew Eric. And... I, I can't imagine a more heartbreaking story. I, and, and obviously it's gotten attention here locally, nationally, globally, mm -hmm. because it's almost like something that can't happen. Yeah. But it has. Yeah. Um, you took a look at the affidavit. Anything stand out to you? Oh, just Jamie Komorowski. Uh, again, innocent until proven guilty, but. 65 and a 25 and now that is from the recording device in her vehicle mm -hmm. she was in a rented toyota camry even though she is a local resident but refusing to take the field sobriety test we won't have blood test results uh for about a month they were sent up to columbia for the state organization there to run those tests but i'm i'm also wondering this how does she put together the pieces of her life she's facing serious jail time one yeah. 
And then after that, she's a young woman in her 20s. What becomes of her after all this? Yeah, all really good questions, uh, Scott. Scott Hamilton, thank you very much. Thanks.